Okay. Hello, guys. Um, so this video is uh, from section 3.2. Okay. And in 3.2, we're going to talk about properties of functions and the graphs. So objectives uh, of section 3.2, we're going to talk about intercepts of function. Uh, still, we're going to talk about domain and ra range of the function. We're going to read domain and range from the graph. We're going to uh, determine uh, whether a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Determine relative maximum or rel relative minimum uh, values of the function. Uh, determine whether a function is even at or neither and determine information about functions from the graph. So a lot of information, um, most of those information we're going to read from the graph of the function, okay? So definition of intercepts. So we may have X and Y intercepts. So intercepts um, of the graphs, that's the point on the X and Y axis. That's where the graph cross or touches X axis or Y axis. So we have two types of intercepts. We have y-intercept, y-intercepts, uh, which um, that's where the graph intersects or touch the y-axis. And we have x-intercepts, that's where the graph intersects or touches the, the x-axis. It's the point on the x-axis. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So first we'll talk about the y-intercept. More specifically, y-intercepts of the function uh, can have a function can have at most y-intercept and the y-intercept only exists if the x-coordinates equal zero. Um, so the y-intercepts can be found by evaluating f of zero. So to find the y-intercepts, we're going to replace x with zero and we're going to solve a given equation for y. Okay. So here we have the first example when we have to find the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we have to evaluate, uh, replace x with zero. So to find the y-intercept, substitute zero for x. Okay. So to substitute zero for x, we have f of zero equal negative three times zero plus two, and we got two. Okay. So that means we have the, uh, the y-intercept is the point on the graph is the point on the graph zero comma two. So like you see, that's why we replace x with zero and the y-intercepts, it's point zero comma two. So the red graph represents the graph of the function negative three x plus two, slope it's negative three, two it's the y-intercept. So we quickly could verify that the y-intercepts is zero comma two. But like you see the y-intercept point on the y-axis, that's where the graph intersects or touches the y-axis. Okay. Next, we'll be very specific about x-intercept. X-intercept is the point on the graph where the graph touches or intersect the x-axis. So um, function may, may have many or infinitely many x-intercepts, okay? And to find the x-intercepts, we're going to replace y with zero. So we're going to have to find the x for which the function value, it's equal zero. And here, just to note that even the function may have many zeros, only the real, the real zeros are x-intercepts. Okay. So in example two, we have to find all intercepts of the function. So I'm going to start with the x-intercepts. So to find x-intercept, make y equals zero, 
which again, y is the same, make f of x equals zero, and solve the equation for x. So we make y equals zero, so we have x to the third power minus two x squared plus x minus two, we need to make that equal zero. Um, so here what we can do, let's factor by grouping. So factoring by grouping, we attach the parentheses and then from each uh, group factor greatest common factor. So from the first group, I'm going to factor x squared and that will give us x minus two plus and from the second group, x and negative two, there's no greatest common factor. So then if there's no greater fa common factor, just factor one and that will become x minus two equals zero. So this is factoring by grouping. Now uh, we have repeating binomial x minus two, which we can factor out. So we end up with x squared plus one equals zero. And now we're ready to apply zero product property, which is going to make each parenthesis equal zero. So x minus two is equal zero, or x squared plus one equals zero. We're getting x equal two, and we're getting here x squared equal negative one, which means take the square root of both sides. We're getting x equal positive negative i. So just remember, hint, square root of negative one, it's i. So this is not a real number. So can't be x-intercept. Because our solutions, it's in a complex number system. So x equal to that's definitely real number. So we have one x intercept. So this is real solution. That means uh, x equal two is the x intercept. which means the point two comma zero is the x intercept, okay? And um, let's find the y intercept. So let's just do with blue color to find y intercept. We're going to make x equals zero and solve for y. So um, again, f of x, you can replace with y. So we have y equal, we make x equal zero. So we have zero to the third power minus two times zero to a second power plus zero minus two. So we end up with negative two. So that's real solution, I mean, real solution, and we have one y-intercept. Zero comma negative two is the y-intercept. Okay. So next here in section 3.2, we have to determine the domain and range from the graph. So to find the domain, don't forget that the domain that's the set of all x values which satisfy the given function. So to find the domain from the graph, you want to always find um, the first point on the left side of the graph and the last point on the right side of the graph and the interval between the first and last point, usually, unless we have this continue function, usually will represent the domain. So here the domain will be the interval between this point and this point. 
but you represent the, the, the domain using only the x coordinates. So the domain will be the interval from A to B, okay? Because we have close points, close circles, that means they part of the graph. Uh, to find the range, range, that's your y values. So to find the range, you always want to find the lowest point on the graph, find the y coordinate of the lowest point on, on the graph, which in our case it's C, find the highest point on the graph, find the y coordinate of the highest point on the graph, which is D. So the interval between those two y values, minimum and maximum, will give you the range. So um, next we have three different graphs and we have to determine the domain and range. Okay, so in part A, to find the domain, um, the first point on the left side, it's the point negative two comma two and the last point on the right side of the graph, it's the point four comma two. Okay, so to find the domain, so this point, which is not part of our graph, the x coordinates equal negative two, and then the last point on the right side on the graph has the x coordinate equal four. So the domain will be the interval between negative two and four. We're going to include four. Excuse me. We're going to include four because we have closed circle, but we're not going to include negative two because we have a hole. So domain, again, don't forget that's the X values, is the interval from negative two to four. So just remember domain represents the X values. Now, when we talk about range, range that's our y values so to find the range find the lowest point on the graph and find the highest point on the graph and then y coordinate of the lowest point on the graph is zero the y coordinate of the highest point on the graph it's equal six so the range uh, will be the interval from zero to six. Zero to six. Okay. Part B, we're going to do the same type of work. Okay, so we continue with example B. We have to find the domain. So domain, to find the domain, you want to find the first point, which is on the left side, that match with x equal negative two. And the last point, which you see on, um, uh, on the right side, so like you see this function continue going to uh, positive infinity. I mean, I guess, I'm sorry. Based on this graph, it looks like, again, hard to tell because we don't have an equation, but it looks like this is the vertical asymptote. So this graph is approaching to positive infinity. I'm talking about Y values. However, it will never have an X value bigger than five. Okay. So the domain will be the interval from negative two to five. We not including, um, I'm sorry, it's just those graphs. Sometimes it's not confusing. Here, uh, here the X coordinate of this point should be negative four. So the domain will be the interval from negative four to five. And we not including negative four because we have the open circle. X equal five, we call that vertical asymptote. Um, Get to 
So vertical asymptote means that uh, the graph, when x is getting closer to 5, the graph will be keep going up to positive infinity. Okay, so now to find the range. To find the range, the y values, we're going to select the lowest point on the graph, which is point negative 4, comma negative 3, and we're trying to select the highest point on the graph, maximum. In this case, we cannot select the highest point on the graph because the graph keeps going up to positive infinity. So the range will be uh, the y values from negative 3 all the way to positive infinity. Okay. And in part C, domain, to find the domain, we want to find the first point on the left side on the graph and the last point on the right side of the graph. So there is no way that we can find the first point uh, on the left side of the graph. So the domain will be from negative infinity, okay, all the way. And the last point on the right side of the graph, it's point 3, comma 4. So the domain will be from negative infinity all the way to 3, including 3. That's why you see a bracket. Range, that's our y values. So range, try to find the minimum and maximum y value. So in this case, y equal negative 2, this is the horizontal asymptote. That means um, the graph cannot have um, lowest value than negative 2. So the range will be from negative 2, but we're not including negative 2 because like you see when x is getting smaller, the y values will approach that negative 2, but will never be equal to negative 2. And the highest point on the graph has a y coordinate equal 4, so the range will be from negative 2 to 4, but we're including that 4, because 4 is part of the graph. Next part of section 3.2 talks about increasing function and decreasing function or constants. Uh, when we're checking a function, it's increasing or decreasing or constant, or when we describing functions, we always will use the x values for that. So it's like in the domain. So function is increasing on open interval. If the values getting get larger as x get larger, okay? Or it can be opposite. If the values uh, of function getting smaller as x getting smaller. Now function will be decreasing on open interval for values of function. If values of function, y values get smaller as x get larger or opposite the y values will, will get larger as x values get smaller. And the function will be constant on open interval if the values of function do not change. So that means um, all the points on the graph when we have a constant function will have the same y, um, y values, the same height. So we're going to know that the function is constant when the graph will be horizontal line. You're going to know that the function is increasing if the function will be going up. And you're going to see that the function is decreasing if the graph will be falling down. So here's this, this example. So um, based on this example, we need to um, provide the intervals using the x values for which function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, so first, this segment, you see that right here, function keeps going down. So that means this part of the function is decreasing. As x getting larger, y value is getting smaller. So this function decrease for the interval from, based on the x-axis, from a to b. We um, And always open intervals from A to B, it's decreasing. So when you're describing decreasing, increasing or constant, you're always keeping open intervals. So this part of the graph, it's constant because you see the horizontal line. So this function is constant for X values between B and C. 
So this function is constant on interval between B and C. All always open intervals. And this part of the graph goes up, which means it's increasing. When X getting larger, Y values also getting larger. So function increase on the interval from C to D. So this is increasing. So we always keep the open intervals because those points where function change from decreasing to constant or constant to increasing, we're going to call them uh, minimums or maximums. And we'll talk about them a little later. So next example, we have a graph of the function y is equal f of x. Not to give an equation, just a graph. And we have to determine whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay. So let's start with the function is increasing. Let's find the increasing interval. The function is increasing on the interval. Okay. So increasing, that means the graph should be going up and this is increasing part right here that's the interval where function increase but also this part of the graph keeps going up so this function is increasing on the interval based on the x-axis from negative infinity so this is increasing part so that's on the interval from negative infinity up to x equals zero union and also this part it's increasing so it increased on the interval based on the x values from two to three so this is increasing now let's talk about the function is decreasing on the interval So decreasing part that's where the graph goes down. So this is decreasing right here and decrease on the interval for X values from zero to X equal to zero to two. Okay. So always using X values and now we'll talk about constant function is constant that's when you're going to see the horizontal line so this is constant and the function is constant for x value starting from three going all the way to positive infinity so the function is constant on the interval from three to positive infinity. So we always using the X values to describe um, how function behaves. Next part of section 3.2 talks about relative maximum and relative minimum values of the function. So when we're talking about values of the function, that means relative maximum will be um, the highest point on the graph where the function switch from increasing to decreasing. So when function change the behavior from increasing, like you see here, this part of the function increase to decreasing. So this function change that behavior at point C f of c, then function set, uh, is said to have relative maximum at x equals c. And the relative maximum, which means the y value of this graph, it's f of c. Now, um, similar definition for relative minimum, the function will have relative minimum at the point where the graph change behavior from decreasing, like you see this segment of the graph, when X getting larger, Y values getting smaller, so this is decreasing, 
and this is increasing. So when function change behavior from decreasing to increasing, the point uh, where that change is, we call relative um, minimum. So relative minimum happen for x equals c. However, the value of the relative minimum will be the y coordinate of that point, which is f of c. So relative maximum, that's where function change from increasing to decreasing. So that's relative maximum. Relative minimum, it's going to be at the point when the behavior change from decreasing to increasing. Be aware that the function can have more than one relative minimum or relative maximum. Okay. So we're going to work on the next example. Uh, determine relative maximum and relative minimum value of the function. And we're going to use the graph to answer all the questions. So part A of the graph. On what interval is function increasing? So this function increase right here and right here. So this is increasing right here and right here. That's where the graph increase. So this function increase on the interval, and don't forget, we're always using the x coordinates, increase from negative 3 to 2, union, and from 5 to positive infinity. So we're always using the x coordinates. Okay, so that's the increasing part. Now, next day asking, um, at which part function decrease? So this part it's decreasing and this part it's decreasing. So like you see, the graph goes down. When X is getting smaller, I'm sorry, larger, Y coordinates getting smaller. So decrease on the interval from x equal negative 7 to x equal negative 3 and decrease for x from x equal 2 to x equal 5. So now, next part, for what values of x that have function have relative minimum? So relative minimum, we talk about it, that's the point where the function change behavior from decreasing to increasing. So here was decreasing, this part it's increasing, okay? Uh, here also this part it's decreasing, this one it's increasing. So relative minimum, that's the point where the function change behavior from decreasing to increasing. So we have two relative minimums and they asking for what values of x that function have relative minimum. So for x equal negative 3 and x equal 5, because at those points, we see that function change behavior from decreasing to increasing. Now part D, for what values of x that function have relative maximum? So relative maximum will be right here. It's the point where the graph change from increasing to decreasing. So for x equal 2, we have relative maximum. So here this is relative maximum. And those two points, relative minimum right here and right here. Okay. So we're still talking about the same type of the graph. Um, we're going to continue with the questions. What are the relative minimum? So the relative minimum, here they asking for y values. 
Okay, so the relative minimum, minima, which are here, are at y equal negative 2 and y equals 0. So we're going to describe that way. f of negative 3, it's equal negative 2. And when x is equal 5, right here, the y coordinate is equal 0. So relative minima are at negative 2 and 0. Now, what are the relative maxima? So again, y value of the maximum. So this is relative maximum. So we're talking about here, 5. So we have relative maximum at 5. So when x is equal to, the y coordinate is equal 5. So this is the relative maximum. Y coordinate of the point where function change behavior from increasing to decreasing. Okay, next part of this class of section 3.2 is to decide whether a function is even at or neither. So function is even when function has y-axis symmetry. So in this, each of those three graphs, each of these functions is even because we can see that each of these functions has y-axis symmetry. It's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Imagine folding this, folding this graph with respect to the y-axis and those parts, uh, the left side on the graph and right side on the graph will overlap. This graph is also symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Um, because like you see, if we will fold the graph with respect to the y-axis, the left part of the graph will overlap with the right part of the graph. And the same thing right here. Also, what we know about the even functions, not only that the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, but there are points on the graph with opposite x coordinates by but the same y value. So like you see, we have points on the graph which have the same y coordinate but opposite x's. Okay. So that's the even function. For even functions, We're always going to have a point on the graph with opposite x coordinate, but the same y value. Okay. Now, which is the same as notation as f of x will give, be equal to f of negative x. For add functions, add functions, that's the graph which are symmetric about the origin, we call them add functions. So those, this graph, it's a uh, add function because it's symmetric with respect to the origin. You have to imagine um, the line y equal x, identity line, and then you will see that the graph will fold. If we will fold the graph with respect to the identity line, like this diagonal line, the, the left and right part of the graph will overlap. So this graph is also odd because it's symmetric with respect to the um, well, um, with respect to the origin. So respect to the origin means respect of the imaginal line y equal x. And here this graph has is odd, which means it's odd function because it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Also, how are you going to know that the graph is odd? Um, like you see on this graph, we have a point x1 and y1. So we're going also to have a point with opposite x coordinate and opposite y coordinate. Um, so just quick example. If the graph is at, on the graph you have a point x comma y and negative x, negative y are on the graph. So let's say if this point will have coordinates 1, comma 1, 
So this point will have coordinates opposite x, which is negative 1, and opposite y, negative 1. Okay. Or imagine if this point has a coordinates, let's say, 4, 1. So that also we need to have a point on the graph with ha which have coordinates negative 4 and negative 1. Okay, so that will be add function. And also the graph can be neither, which means doesn't have y-axis symmetry or origin symmetry. So next example, we need to decide uh, whether each graph is even add or neither. Uh, for part A, we definitely don't have y-axis symmetry. We also don't have that origin symmetry, so this is neither. For part B, for part B, this graph will be add because this graph will have um, origin symmetry. So we can always compare, imagine the line going through the origin. So this point and this point, they are symmetric with respect to the origin. So this is add. And part C of the graph, this graph definitely has y-axis symmetry. If we we'll fold this graph with respect to the y-axis, the left side and the right side of the graph will overlap. So this is even because of y-axis symmetry. So even y-axis symmetry At, we have that origin symmetry. And neither, we don't see the symmetry. Okay. And next part, example seven, very important. We're going to use the graph to answer, get the information from the graph. So first they asking, so we're putting everything together. First they asking what is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept is the point on the y-axis where the graph intersect the y-axis. So here, this is our y-intersect. So y-intersect, it's at the point 0, comma, negative 2. Next, part B. What are the real zeros uh, of the function? So real zeros of the functions, that means x-intercepts. So they asking for x-intercepts. The real zeros means x-intercepts. So we have couple x-intercepts. That's where the graph intersects or touches x-axis. So the real zeros will be at x equal negative 6 negative 2, uh, 2, this is, again, this one was just y, 2, x equals 6, and x equals 10. So when they asking for real zeros, I'm only listing the x-coordinates of x-intercepts. Okay, so here, hint, list x coordinates of x intercepts next one part c uh, determine the domain and the range of the function so to find the domain that's that's the x values for which graph exists so I'm going to find the first point on the left side, the x um, first point of the on the graph which I see on the left side, and the last point on the graph which I see on the right side. Okay, so um, based on the x-axis, so it's going to be the interval from negative seven to eleven. Since at x equal negative seven, we have a hole, so domain has the open interval from negative seven 
all the way to 11. At x equal 11, we have a closed circle, so we keep it bracket. Now range, that's the y values. So find the lowest point on the graph right here. So the lowest point on the graph is for y equal negative 5. Find the highest point on the graph. So the highest point on the graph, we have two highest points on the graph, and they work for y equal 4. Both of them have the y coordinate equal 4. So um, the range will be from negative 5 to 4. So it's the interval from negative 5 to 4. And like you see, I use the y coordinate to describe the range. We including this point, this point, and this point. It's part of the graph. That's why you have it close circle, um, close brackets. Part D, we have to decide where function increase. So functions increasing where you see the graph going up. So function will increase right here when x is getting larger, y getting larger. Function increase right here and our function increase right here. So for increasing, we're using the x values to describe the interval where function increase and always open parentheses. So increase from negative 7 up to here, so that works for x equal negative 4. And I will put union and increase for x equal 0 all the way to x equal 4. So from 0 to 4, when we describe increasing, decreasing constant, always open interval. And then increase from this point, so this point has coordinates 8 comma negative 5, so from x equal 8, all the way to that point, which is uh, at x equal 11. So increasing. Next, we'll talk about decreasing. That's where the graph goes down. So this is decreasing right here. This is decreasing. That's where the graph goes down. So decrease before x is between negative 4 and 0. Union and also decrease for x is from 4 all the way to 8. Okay, that's it. Constant, this graph is not constant. There is no horizontal segment. So constant, that's where we should have that horizontal line. Okay. And a couple more questions. For part E, for what values of X does the function obtain relative maximum. So relative maximum is where the graph change behavior from increasing to decreasing. So this is relative maximum. This is relative maximum because the graph change behavior from increasing to decreasing. And that's it. Okay. Um, so for part E, we have for what values of x that function has relative maximum. So this is, I will just put maximum and max relative. So we have relative maximum for x equal negative 4 and x equal 4. And now, uh, what are the relative maxima? So now here they're talking about y values. So f of negative 4, when x is equal negative 4, the y coordinate is equal 4. So 4 is the relative maximum. 
and also when x is equal 4, the y coordinates equal 2. So 4 and 2 are the values of relative maximum. So that's the relative maxima, 4 and 2. Relative maxima. Okay. Now for part F, they asking for what values of x that function have relative minima. So relative minima will be here and here. That's where the graph change behavior from decreasing to increasing. Like you see this part decrease, this one increase. So those two are relative minimum. And this is also relative minimum. So our graph has relative minimum for x equals 0 and x equals 8. We have relative minimum. And they asking here for what are the relative minima. So here they asking for y values. So when x is equal to 0, y coordinate is equal to negative 2. And when x is equal to 8, The y value is equal to negative 5. So that means negative 2 and negative 5. That's our relative minima. Minima. And G, they asking if the graph is even at or neither. So um, definitely this graph is not even, doesn't have, excuse me, it's not even. We don't have that y-axis symmetry because again, if we fold the graph with respect to the y-axis, um, like this point, should match with the point negative four comma two, okay? Uh, which will be right here. So we definitely don't have um, y-axis symmetry. So graph is not even. Also graph does not have origin symmetry because that point four comma two should match with the point negative four comma two. Uh, negative two right here. And we don't have that. So the answer will be neither. That's it. And also I quickly want to just go back to the notes when they scrap, uh, when we were giving the definition for even and add. Okay, so I gave you the example of the points for add function have x comma y and the opposite of x and opposite of y. And for even function we have point x comma y and negative x comma y. For example, you have point, let's say, 2 comma 5 and point negative 2 comma 5 will be on the graph. Opposite x's, the same y's. Okay. So this is the end of section 3.2. I'm going to share the notes um, from that video with you guys on Canvas. Thank you for watching.